welcome to the Social University Podcast. We are so glad you're joining us today because we want to help business owners, entrepreneurs, and people just like you who want to build their business online. Listen, if we can do it, you can do it. So let's go. Today we are going to talk about hashtags. I get these, I get questions about hashtags a lot because once upon a time, not so long ago, really and truly the only platform that used hashtags was Twitter. And then Instagram got on the bandwagon and then Pinterest got on the bandwagon. And now lots of platforms encourage hashtag use. And I think it can be totally confusing. I think not everybody knows how many they need to use or which platforms call for them. So let's dig into it, shall we? And these are in no particular order. So let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, first um, first on the list, LinkedIn. They recommend only three hashtags per post. And if especially if you're writing longer form content, if you do not assign hashtags, they will assign them for you because they want your information to be found. You can search on LinkedIn whether you have hashtags or not. They will do keyword searches. So I don't know why they're so super keen on hashtags, but they seem to be. There's not really a limit. They do suggest three. If you add 10, you will show up in the search for all 10, but LinkedIn says three. Um, You can follow hashtags on LinkedIn as well. So posts containing your chosen hashtags will automatically appear in your newsfeed. So if I wanted to stay up to date on social media news and I follow that hashtag, everything associated with that hashtag will automatically appear in my feed. It makes it a great listening tool so you can find out what's happening in your industry. Okay, second, Instagram. Okay, according to later.com, Instagram has recently, and this has been very new, Instagram has recently advised new cre- all creators to only use between three and five hashtags, which I, I don't know if I agree with. We've actually been beta testing this on ourselves. So at the end of this month, we'll have a much better understanding about the stats and the analytics if they support three hashtags or if, you know, we can still use, you can use 20, but I want to find out is three more effective than 20. I know Instagram is suggesting fewer hashtags because they're saying it makes more reliable self-categorization. So basically they're telling you the fewer you have, the better selection you'll make when you're choosing your tags and not put these random tags that don't mean anything. Well, if you're a business, every tag you've chosen means something. You have the large tags for the industry, you have specific tags for your business, and then you have seasonal tags that matter based on what you're posting, the time of year and the day. I'm not a big fan of cutting back to three to five, especially on Instagram, because that's how people find you. They go down that hashtag rabbit hole. So I will be sure and follow up with you guys at the end of our 30 day test and tell you if it's working. Um, I'm very conflicted about this. We have found that using more hashtags typically yields the best results, but with Instagram really pushing three to five, that's why we're testing. Um, 20 is really the highest with the best average. How many should you use? Uh, I, I would say in the interim, I would use somewhere between five and 10 until we can have a solid confirmation of what's really working. And I would use five different types. Like, again, like I mentioned previously, a location, branded industry, community, and a descriptive so that people can find your material no matter how they're looking for it. So again, Instagram says three to five max. We're still, um, we're still testing that, but you can use up to 20. So just bear that in mind. Also, quick side note, put it in the caption, if you are putting your hashtags in the comments, Instagram can no longer see that. Used to, it didn't matter. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. They could find it no matter where it was. Not anymore. If you do not use those hashtags directly in the caption, they're hidden. So make sure if you're using your hashtags to put them in the actual caption. Okay. And you guys, if you have questions, let me know. I'm happy to stop and answer any questions you might have. Um, Let's say, okay, Twitter. Twitter suggests one or two relevant hashtags, like your sweet spot. They don't suggest hashtag stuffing or overusing, but other platforms, I mean, just like all the other platforms, you can still show up in searches for every hashtag that you use. So ideally you want to kind of 
pick through Twitter and see what your competitors are doing, see what your colleagues are doing to kind of see how they're getting found. And I'm going to give you tools at the end of um, this to show you kind of what you can use to do your own hashtag research. So we'll, we will get there. But Twitter, you're looking at three to five hashtags. Facebook. Uh, okay. Oh, so according to Hootsuite, the optimal number is two to three. I would tell you two to three is your max because most of your Facebook users tend to, they skew a little bit older and the older the user, the less they like those hashtags and they're less likely to use them to search. They're going to do a keyword search or they're going to search for the business name long before they ever look for hashtag. I have yet to meet any individual that's over 50 that will do a hashtag search at all. Hashtag searches are almost uniquely um, young. And when I say young, I would say under 40. So it's I think it's very unusual to have success on Facebook with hashtags. Um, you can search hashtags on Facebook, just like all the other platforms. But again, if you're if you have an older audience, that's just not how they look for things. They look based on keyword. Um, YouTube, you can use hashtags. The optimum number is three to five. You can put hashtags in your brand's YouTube video title or the description. You can click on the hyperlinked hashtag to see a feed with other videos that also use the same hashtag. Don't use more than 15. Really and truly, the tags on YouTube, it's not about the hashtag. It's about the tags in the description. So you want to have, uh, and those are hidden. So unless you have a widget installed in your, like key, keywords everywhere, installed in your Chrome browser, you're not going to see the tags that other people are using. But you can see a hashtag because most people put that in the description of the video or the title of the video versus the actual tags, which are hidden to your average user bear that in mind. And I can use 30 tags, 50 tags in my description, not in my description, but in the hidden part where you actually put um, the tags that Google and YouTube use to search for your video. Um, again, I would say three to five is plenty for a YouTube video because again, that's not how most people search on YouTube. They use keywords and the, those keywords are going to show up whether the hashtag is there or not. Pinterest recommends using between two and five, especially if you're pinning for business. Include um, Pinterest hashtags if you're writing a description or in a written description when you're repinning. Pinterest even offers hashtag suggestions. Um, you can use up to 20. You can use more than 20. Don't use more than 20. I would use more than 10 on Pinterest. It's still a lot. Again, keywords are still effective on Pinterest. You don't have to use a hashtag, but you can follow hashtags. And of course, just like Instagram and Twitter, if, if you have something that's tagged specifically, every time somebody pulls it up, they will pull up your tag. Okay, TikTok, last one. It is suggested to use three to five for the best results. You can use a combination of niche and trending hashtags, and you want to leave space in the caption for hashtags. Here's the deal. TikTok is the most intuitive platform. It has the best algorithm. So if you do hashtag breakfast location and I am searching for breakfast, it will pick up on that one word inside the hashtag. Unlike Instagram, you have to search it exactly like it's written or it doesn't come up. So when people use these random long hashtag can't believe it's Wednesday or hashtag get me to Friday that make no sense at all. It's just not, it's not searchable unless somebody is searching exactly that right hashtag. But TikTok will pick out the word inside the hashtag. So if you are looking for breakfast recipes and you search for hashtag uh, breakfast recipes, if I use the word recipe or breakfast in any of my tags, my stuff will come up. A very intuitive, uh, seriously, by far the best hashtag use the best tag use, I think, of any of the social media platforms. Am I biased? Yeah, completely. But still, it's one of the most effective ways to use hashtags and tags. Okay, so now that you know kind of what you need to be using, let's talk about how you find out what the best ones are to use. So let's talk about resources. Of course, Twitter and Instagram are two of your best resources for those specific platforms. You want to find out if the hashtag you're going to use works on Instagram, go look at Look for it on Instagram. Look it up on Instagram and see how many thousand people. If it's only being if it's only been used 20 times, that's probably not a great hashtag and not a lot of people are looking for it. If it's been used 20 million times, you're going to get lost in the shuffle. So you need a combination that has 
some that are large and some that are smaller and some that are branded. So if you go hashtag, if you look for um, hashtag here in Toronto, everything I'm tagged in will come up. Now, it doesn't matter to me how many tags, if it's 20 or if it's 2000, because I know they're unique to me. It's unique to me. So those are branded. Uh, and then we have, of course, the larger hashtag, hashtag social media manager. And then the smaller ones might be hashtag Facebook tricks or hashtag Instagram's the worst. You get the idea where it gets more specific when we talk about specific content. Um, TweetDeck is a free Twitter management tool that includes a hashtag research feature. Again, it's free. You can use it for free. Of course, because it is TweetDeck, it is very specific to Twitter research. Social B is a hashtag generator that provides the best hashtags for each social media platform based specifically on your content. It is not free, but you have a 14 day free trial. So you can sign up and get the information you need and then bail out. Hashtagify, it shows suggestions and popularity. So it'll tell you how often it's being used and where it's being used. It's the most advanced Twitter and Instagram because it only works for Twitter and Instagram um, tracking tool. It allows you to find the best hashtags to reach your specific audience. It gives custom suggestions and it helps you getting to know who your influencers and your competitors are much better in your industry. It comes with several different plans that you can choose from depending on your hashtag usage and your research volume. I've always used the free version without any issue. So if you want to go check it out, it's hashtagify me is how you search that. And uh, if you guys want to check back on our blog next week, we will convert this into a blog and there'll be links for everything in the blog. So you can go check it out. Right tag, R-I-T-E, right tag um, gives you suggestions from a photograph. It's free, but it can go up to $4 a month. Metricool is another one that you can use that is excellent, but really to get the most out of it, you need to pay. They do have a free version. Uh, they make it easy to choose the right hashtags inside the scheduler so you don't have to constantly look. You can pick them directly from the scheduler and it works for any platform. So you can use it across all different platforms to find exactly what you're looking for for that specific platform. However, the hashtag research is only a premium feature not a free feature. So if you want to use it, it's going to be about $12 a month for an individual user. But again, you can sign up and use it for a month and then sign out if you want to. You're really only checking your hashtags quarterly, ideally quarterly, but at least twice a year. So it's not like you have to have this service constantly. You can get what you need and then stop the service. And of course, last but not least, ChatGPT can help you research the most popular hashtags by platform. You just have to ask it the right question. And uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to check out ChatGPT, I highly recommend you do. It is the maybe the coolest thing ever. And it's about to revolutionize a lot of the way we do things online. And I still don't think a lot of people know that it exists. So that is it for me this week. If you guys have a specific topic or subject that you want more information about, please let us know. You can leave a comment or send a direct message. And of course, we're always happy to answer your questions. Until next week, I am Karen Taradis with Social U and I'm here to help. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for the Social University podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media at Stay Social U. That's the letter U. And we will talk to you next week. Remember, you've got this.